Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. We are joined today by Governor Gary Herbert, who's taken time out of his schedule to talk to us about the Healthy Care Initiative, Utah's alternative to Medicaid. And I appreciate your taking the time, Governor. Well, thank you. It's an honor to be with you as always, Chad. Thank you. I want to start this by just saying that as I've been traveling around and in my conversations with people, the general rank and file citizen of the state seems kind of tired with this issue. And, and they're going e either adopt it or drop it already because there's just been a lot of contention back and forth. I know there are people that say we should still just go with regular Medicaid. There's your plan. There are people in the legislature that say it's too much money. We're going to get ourselves trapped. Uh, but the county commissioners see this very differently, and they and 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 almost to a single one everywhere in the state, they're saying let's let's embrace this. The county commissioners think the state will suffer without the healthy initiative. What's your take on it? Well, it's a complex issue, and uh, I think people out there probably get a little numb about the complexity and the talk that's going on about the healthy Utah approach as an alternative to Medicaid expansion. And again, the complexities really are boiled down to, we're gonna to have to pay a lot of money to Washington, D.C. because of the law on the books called the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. It's about $680 million that we have to send to Washington, D.C. Uh, Medicaid expansion is voluntary, but the tax is mandatory. We have to pay it. So the only question really is, who's gonna spend it? Do you want Washington to spend it as they see fit? Or should we bring it back to Utah and redirect it into a better program than Medicaid by putting it into what we call Healthy Utah, which fosters more individual responsibility, not only helps people with their health care, but it helps them uh, get out, off of government assistance by helping those who are able-bodied, if you're unemployed, to get a job, to get employed, and if you're underemployed, to get a better job. It really treats the whole individual. So I think it's a great alternative, which will give us better outcomes and respects the fact that our taxpayers are sending a lot of money uh, to Washington, D.C., whether they like it or not. That being said, for the counties, it is a benefit because they have to take care of the uninsured people on the county dollar. And so uh, not being able to take some of our money back, it's our dollars, and help the, uh, 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 take care of some of the expenses that the county incurs is probably not a wise thing. And uh, it's estimated that about $19 million of additional costs that counties will have to absorb if we don't take this money back. And in addition to that, another $21 million in additional tax revenue, again, generated by Utahns, that they'll be able to utilize for their own health care needs on the county level. So it's our money, we're, we're being taxed for it. It just seems wisdom to me that we take that money back and redirect it into the county's health care needs and into the Healthy Utah program to help those most vulnerable in our society, kind of the safety net issues that Ronald Reagan talked about and help them get through some maybe difficult times in their lives with health care. It seems like, um, I, I just read in the paper a couple of days ago that, that the federal agency that manages this, and you've been talking with them, is not exactly sure about this. Un I mean, this unemployment thing is is kind of a, it's an issue, it's a bone of contention. Could that kibosh the whole deal? Well, you know, it certainly uh, could make it more difficult for the legislature and for me to uh, uh, accept this alternative. Uh, we're trying to put together a, a new way of doing things. It's a pilot program. It's experimental. We're, we're breaking new ground here. And the president has said to me, hey, if you've got a better way to do things, I want to hear about it, and we'll see if we can give you the flexibility as a state to do something that's a little more outside the box. Well, we have that, and we've been given to this point more flexibility than any state in America ever has under the Affordable Care Act for an alternative to Medicaid expansion. It's still, there's a few things I'd like to tweak. I'm still in ongoing negotiations. It's somewhat a work in progress in that regard. But the work effort with carrot and stick approaches is really gonna be a part uh, of this effort. And I expect that that will be uh, approved by the Obama administration. You know, what? that makes me go back to thinking during the Clinton administration, they talked about shifting from, from welfare to workfare even in that administration, so one would think that they would be receptive to that. You would think so. In fact, it was controversial when uh, 
Clinton and the Republican controlled Congress uh, uh, proposed that, but the results are, are, are positive. They had significant reduction of the welfare rolls, uh, increased employment opportunities because strict guidelines were given with an incentive on work, not on welfare. Well, the same thing is true here. This is health care, but it's a government-assisted welfare type of assistance. And so our, we're just saying that's well and good. We need to help people who need help. But the emphasis ought to be in getting you to help yourself and getting better economics in your household so that you don't need government assistance. And so it's really a balanced approach. We think it makes more sense. It certainly fits the Utah culture. And frankly, I think it's a good example of what can be done as states innovate better ways to solve problems. There are some people that look at this and they hear the talk from the legislature and some of the you know, more concerned people about us going it on our own. And they say, we're going to get trapped and have to pick up the bill for this if the government can't afford it. And so their default is to say, well, so why don't we just let the federal government do the, the expansion of Medicaid their way and, and just make it their responsibility? Does it really work like that? No, it doesn't. Uh, the, uh, the expansion of Medicaid has to be done by the states, uh, and that's just how the law has been created. Again, it's complex, and there are flaws in the law because of the, the law itself, but then that coupled with the Supreme Court decision have left a hole in the population of people who cannot access health care, those who really are uh, below poverty. There's a, what we call it the, uh, the donut hole, the gap that needs to be covered. Uh, people making more money get coverage and people making less money don't. I mean, it's not fair. We have a moral responsibility, I believe, as a people to help these folks if we can. And the practical realities are we send about $680 million back to Washington, D.C. under the Affordable Care Act. We get back about $346 million, if we will, to end up putting it into this Healthy Utah program. What that means, let's just pick five years into the future, because there's some additional costs that the state's got to pick up in order to, to, to get the money to come. The first year doesn't cost us anything, but it, it gradually increases over time. And so over five years, we'll have to spend about $100 20 million dollars of additional Utah taxpayers money but what we access of Utah taxpayers money that comes back to Utah so we can spend it and infuse it into the economy of Utah is 2.1 billion it's a significant return on investment and we, and we get none of it if yeah. we don't I would just assume they don't take the money from us in the first place and we develop our own programs on a state-by-state -state basis you know that ship's already left the shore uh, you know, the law has been passed. It's the law of the books. And as I've said, Medicaid expansion is voluntary, but the taxes are mandatory. We have to pay them whether we take them back and spend them or not. It's going to be spent by Washington, D.C., which I think is probably the least effective way to spend the money. So we're going to take a quick break here. And uh, when we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with Governor Gary Herbert on Medicaid, Medicaid expansion and the Healthy, Healthy Utah, Utah Initiative. I want to make sure I get that correct. And uh, we'll be back after this commercial break on the county seat. What would you do with an extra day in Utah Valley? Explore the Wasatch Mountains? Snap a family photo at Bridal Veil Falls. Cool off on Utah Lake or the Provo River. No matter what you're searching for, you can find it in Utah Valley. Bring everyone together. You go through the day-to-day -day repeating what you did yesterday. Don't you wish you could access that piece of your life that's missing? Find the beauty, serenity, family fun, or anything else that's missing from your life in the Cedar City Bryan Head area. Gain access to your adventure, whether it's camping, hiking, the arts, festivals, or just a getaway. Visit CedarCityAYL.com for details on all the adventures that you can access in scenic southern Utah. Let's be honest, you don't know much about Beaver County. 
Well, let me tell you about it. It's the birthplace of outlaw Butch Cassidy and inventor Philo T. Farnsworth. Some of the best skiing in Utah is at Eagle Point. You've got camping, Canyon Breeze Golf Course, Crusher and the Tushers, Beaver Territorial Courthouse, Snowmobiling, Renewable Energy, Pioneer Car Show, Squeaky Cheese, Ghost Town to Explore, Best Water in the Country, Paiute ATV Trails, Old Frisco Kilns, Horse Racing, Hunting, Fishing, and it's a good place to live. Beaver County, mountains of fun. I could tell you more, but why don't you come and see it for yourself? Welcome back to the county seat. We're talking today with Governor Gary Herbert about the Affordable Care Act uh, provision that we come up with some form of expansion of what they call Medicaid, but we here in Utah call the Healthy Utah Initiative. There's been a little criticism lately, uh, an out-of-state group that uh, says, well, Governor Herbert is, uh, is support of and in favor of and backs the idea of the entire Affordable Care Act. Uh, and, and he's pushing forward with that. But as I recall history, as this whole thing was unfolding, that didn't seem to be the position you took. What's your response to this group? Well, I tend to ignore criticism that comes from outside the state. Um, you know, it's, uh, I, I represent the people of Utah, and so I listen to those folks and the people here in Utah. And there are probably some legitimate concerns about the Affordable Care Act. I certainly have not been a supporter of the Affordable Care Act. I've been one of the leading critics, in fact, of the Patient Protection Affordable Care Act, commonly referred to as Obamacare. <clears throat> we, in fact, as a state, sued at my insistence, and uh, we said that this is not constitutional. Uh, we were right on our arguments. We thought it was unconstitutional under the Commerce Clause, to in fact mandate that people have to buy uh, some kind of a product or insurance. We won on that in the Supreme Court, but they changed the argument, the Obama administration, and said this is not a penalty if you don't participate, it's a tax. And John Roberts in his uh, decision, again with the majority, said that under the taxation rights uh, under the Constitution, it was constitutional. So. That's part of the problem. It's, it's constitutional. The taxation is mandated, but they said you can expand Medicaid. Uh, that's a voluntary decision. Now, we've been involved in Medicaid in this state since the late 60s, and uh, it's, it's served our public well, our citizens well. It's, uh, it's a challenge with increasing health costs. That's really the issue that should have been addressed is how do we keep the cost of health care down, reduce them? Uh, th this has not done that. Um, and, and so uh, we're, right now we need to make a decision as far as what's the practical responsibility <clears throat> of, of, of our, to our taxpayers that are paying a bill and, and can we spend it more effectively. So uh, I think this is a better alternative. We're going to pay for it. We might as well enjoy the benefits that we can get from the taxes by redirecting it into a better program. And uh, I think the question is, is it sustainable? Uh, will the federal government keep their obligations? Can we afford to do it on our side? The answer, I think, to all those is yes. But that's going to be part of the discussion we'll have with the legislature to make sure that they're comfortable. I've spent now nearly 18 months developing this program and working with uh, stakeholders and the administration to get to where we're at today. The legislature is just kind of now learning more about it. They'll get into the details. They'll have questions. We'll, we'll have answers, and hopefully we'll come together before this legislative session is over on a healthy Utah approach to solving this problem. There still seems to be a little bit of, of frustration uh, and, and concern about whether this is the right path. Uh, do, you think there, do, you, do you think that you will be able to find that middle ground uh, that, that, that will make this come to fruition? Yes, I do. I'm, I'm uh, cautiously optimistic that uh, we in Utah roll up our sleeves and find solutions to difficult problems. I appreciate the fact that the leadership in both the Senate and the House have, all, uh, have both said doing nothing is not an option. And also Speaker uh, Hughes has said, let's not let perfect be the enemy of good. Because clearly what we're proposing, there's, it's not perfect. It does have some... Uh, challenges and, and some issues there that need to be concerned, we ought to be concerned about and address. But let's not let perfect be the enemy of good. So doing nothing is not an option. We're, we're going to do the best we can with what we've got. And so now we're just discussing what is the something that we do. I'm saying I've put out there a blueprint of how we can go forward respecting the taxpayers' dollars and help people that we have probably a moral obligation to help. 
the Ronald Reagan safety net aspects. And uh, so I think there's something that I've got out there at Health of Utah is it. If there's a better program, hey, bring it forward. If the legislature's got a better idea, bring it forward. If they can improve on my Health of Utah, bring it forward. I expect that by the end of the session, we'll have an agreement. If I recall, you were looking at all kinds of things when you started whittling this down. Do you think you've got the best one? I, absolutely. Uh, the, we have the best program out there, and we have a lot of other states and other governors are watching to see what happens in Utah because they would like to copy or emulate to a certain extent what we're doing here in Utah, too. They like the idea that we're uh, uh, combining a work effort to help people get off of government assistance and a better job with the fact that we're going to give you some government assistance health care. And, you know, if you're going to ask the taxpayer for something, the taxpayer ought to have the right to ask you for something, at least a willingness to go out there and see about improving yourself, your skills, education, training, to get a better job. And we'll provide that for you at no additional cost. So it's win, win, win all the way around. Um, we've looked at different varieties from all just voluntary private donation care uh, to a full-blown Medicaid expansion and things in between that Healthy Utah is clearly, in my mind, the best alternative, gives us better outcomes, respects the taxpayers' dollars, infuses our economy with about $680 or $80 million uh, over time, a total of about $2 billion over the first five to six years. Uh, again, I, I think it's hard to find anything better. If there's something out there, bring it on. Okay, very good. We're going to take a quick break here on the county seat. We'll be back with our conversation with Governor Gary Herbert on the Utah Healthy Initiative. We'll be right back. There are a couple great things about the Innovation. One is it's still small, it's a community. That makes you feel like when you go somewhere, you know everybody. When you know your neighbor, and your neighbor knows you, and you can trust each other, people look out for one another. I grew up in the Uinta Basin, and I think that it's a good place to raise a family. So we packed up our three kids, and here we came to Uinta County, and what a great place it was. It's not too big, it's not too small. And, and it has a lot to offer that you just don't get in the big city anymore. When you buy Utah made and grown. I'm a Utah zone vegetable grower. I care about the foods I produce. Because when it comes to quality local foods, I understand the importance of Utah grown and raised. And the jobs that we enjoy are vital because Utah's own supports our communities. As a consumer, I look for Utah's own products because Utah's own is good for me and it's good for Utah. Keep it live here at home, Utah's own. There is a place where looking out means looking in. Where an impression lasting only a few seconds will be imprinted on a life forever. Where courage is forged and innocence rediscovered. Where remembering is rewarding and forgetting unforgettable. There is a place where truth is felt and where seeing is believing. There is a place. Welcome back to the county seat. Our discussion today with Governor Gary Herbert. We're talking about health care in Utah. And it's referred to as an alternative to Medicaid expansion uh -huh. called Healthy Utah. Not Utah Health. Whatever you've been saying. <laughs> it's, it, it's Healthy Utah. Again, it's bringing back dollars. We are already being taxed, already being spent, and we're bringing it back to Utah and spending it the way we think it should be spent in a better, more effective way for the recipient. You see, every time I talk with you, Governor, I learn something new. Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> well, you need to have me on more often. <laughs> I do need a lot of tutoring. Uh, I do have, I, I do want to talk about something, though, that, that because there's still people that think that it just would be simpler to go to Medicaid, which is totally government-run insurance. Yeah, it's like Medicaid that we have today, only expanded to uh, take on more individuals. And uh, 
the, the difference is there's, there, we want people to have some skin in the game. Uh, so you'll have to pay a part of the premium. You'll have to have larger copays. If you don't take care of yourself and you run to the emergency room, you will have to pay a larger fee at the emergency room. So we're trying to redirect the people to take on responsibility for their own health care. If you don't care about your health care, why should I? So that's part of the, uh, of, the, of the nuance change different and our desire to say to you, uh, you're here because you're not making enough money. We're going to have you help you get a better job so you can make more money and get off of government assistance, which is a good thing. Now, there's also a component of this that's good for Utah business as well, because because of that very fact that it's not government oriented, we're engaging the private sector, uh, so we're not competing with them on this. That's program. right. All the money will be uh, redirected into the private insurance market. So you as a recipient, if you were there, you'd, you'd have all these choices that you'd be able to make. You'd have a, your own insurance agent. You'd be able to find a policy that fits you best for you individually or for your family, uh, multiple choices. But the money goes into the private insurance market, as it does for most everybody, as opposed to more government involvement and strings and lower uh, payments uh, and, and maybe not as good a coverage. Was that a concern of yours, uh, that, that if we had gone with a, a government program, th that it would expand the competition against the private sector and might have weakened it? There is a concern, particularly in the insurance industry, that if we went with a Medicaid expansion, that their uh, ability of the market would diminish. Uh, there would be less competition out there, and consequently prices ultimately would go up. And uh, there's some things about the Affordable Care Act that probably intuitively we think are going to raise costs you know we're, we're covering pre-existing conditions now people can wait till they have a problem and then jump on board with the affordable care act and get in uh, health care coverage so there's some issues out there that are over and above what we're talking about here with healthy utah but certainly are corollary issues well it also uh, reduces the size of the risk pool if you if if the government takes some of that away for the older folks, like myself, it probably would help reduce our insurance premiums. But for the younger folks who are healthier and, and less inclined to have a need for health care services, their premiums are going to go up. Uh, Utah is also kind of unique in that we've had the lowest cost health care in the nation. We have a really good health care system here in Utah that's working. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And not only is it lower cost, but it's about the fifth rate of the best quality. So uh, we're one of those states that probably don't benefit much from the Affordable Care Act. And in fact, now uh, they're extracting money from us. I'm just trying to take it and improve it. We've been given lemons. I'm trying to make some kind of lemonade out of this situation. It may not be the sweetest lemonade, but it's better than just lemons. And that's why I say, well, let's not let perfect get in the way of good. Very good. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back for our final thoughts here on the county seat talking about health care in Utah with Governor Gary Herbert. We'll be back in just a second. Color, it's something that can be seen. But have you ever wanted to reach out and touch it? Experience it. In San Juan County, Utah color comes to life like nowhere else on earth. Color can be more than an abstract. Color can be your gateway to a new world. Visit San Juan County and explore the past, present, and future in a way that you've only dreamed of. San Juan County. Color. Your experience. What's the story of your life? What chapter are you on? Did you happen to get married recently? Perhaps you found your lost puppy at the animal shelter. Or you're taking an art class at the senior center. There's that flu shot that kept you well last season. And don't forget the museums and historical sites your family loves. And all the fun you have at the County Swim Center. County services from search and rescue to maintaining roads bring tremendous value to each of our lives. We're the Utah Association of Counties, helping you build the story of your life. that is beyond words. There is nothing to be said, except take your time in Bryce Canyon country. Kanab, base camp for your Southern Utah adventures. You 
belong in Kanab. Welcome back to the county seat. Our conversation with Governor Gary Herbert about health care in Utah and what's coming up in the legislature. With the Healthy Utah Initiative, uh, we, we we as citizens, I guess, have an obligation to actually get engaged in this. What tools do you have available for the viewers of this show so that they can really get up to speed? Because you say it is a complex issue. Can they get a grasp of it in a 25-page booklet? Uh, yes, they can. We actually have it online. Uh, the proposal we've given to the legislature for their perusal and review and uh, hopefully consideration and support is available online. You can go to utah.gov and uh, click on uh, the Healthy Utah a link there and you can read the 25 pages yourself and get a, a sense for what's being done. You know, I think people ought to uh, pay attention. This is a significantly big issue and uh, not without controversy. I think it is the best proposal we, I've seen when it comes to Medicaid expansion and what we should do with our taxpayers' dollars. But people ought to, to you know, talk to doctors, talk to their insurance people. There are people out there that will speak in opposition. Listen to both sides and weigh and consider what they think is in their own best interest as a taxpayer and a consumer and what is, is the best policy for the people of Utah. And then let your legislators know. Uh, we, ought, we are a citizen legislator that listens to the people and they want to hear from the folks out there. Uh, and so we ask your viewers to get involved. Well, that's always been the slogan on our program. So um, we say, you know, local government is where your life happens. Be part of the solution to it. And so that's very good advice from you. Uh, very quickly, how do they find the governor's website for somebody that just decided today they're going to become a political <laughs> activist? <laughs> well, go to utah.gov, uh -huh. and that should bring up the state of Utah web page. You can go to the governor's office there, and there's a lot of different information there, and you see different departments. But go to the link that's on Healthy Utah, and you can click under that link, and you'll get to the uh, open up the 25-page uh, booklet that we have online. That's what we've given to the legislature, so they can look at it just as if they were a legislature and listen and learn and and decide how would I vote on this issue. Uh, we think it's a great thing. The polling shows that the overwhelming uh, majority of Utahns support it. Over 70 percent support the Healthy Utah concept. Excellent. And then you can go right over to the legislative page while you're on the site and get in touch with your legislator and your senator. Thank you so much for joining us and allowing us into your home today on the county seat. Governor, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to chat with us. It's always a privilege and a pleasure. And we will look for you next week on the county seat. Thank you, Chad. Great to be with you. Thank you. If you like this video, then we invite you to subscribe to our channel, The County Seat. You can do that here. And we invite you to share with your friends. We also invite you to get all the latest up-to-date information by following us on our social media channels. And if all else fails, make sure that you watch The County Seat Sunday morning at 8.30 right here on ABC4 Utah.